My name is Alyssa Arias and today I'm going to be talking about DNA replication. So the definition of DNA replication is when DNA replicates itself by making a copy during cell division. Now you may be thinking, what three things make up DNA? DNA is made of chemical building blocks called nucleotides and the building blocks are made up of three parts, a phosphate group, a sugar group, and, four and one of the four types of nitrogen bases. So to form a strand of DNA, nucleotides are linked into chains with the phosphate and sugar groups alternating each other. Now what happens before DNA replication? Before DNA replication can occur, the length of the DNA double helix has to be copied and unwound, so the enzyme DNA polymerase then moves along to the exposed DNA strand, joining the new, uh, the new nucleotides that had just arrived into a complementary strand, which is to the template. Now, the four steps of DNA replication are step one, replication fork formation, two, primer binding, three, elongation, and four, termination. So we're going to go more in depth of that. So the first step, which is obviously replication fork formation, means before the DNA can be replicated, the double-stranded molecule has to be unzipped into two single strands. And DNA has four bases called adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. And adenine only pairs with thymine and cytosine only pairs with guanine. And in order to unwind the DNA, these interactions have to be broken. So this is performed by an enzyme known as the DNA double helicase and the DNA helicase rep, uh, replaces the hydrogen binding between the base pairs to separate the strands into what we know as the Y-shaped replication fork formation. And the second step is the primer binding and this leading strand is the simplest to recreate because once the DNA has been separated the short piece of RNA called the primer binds to the three inch end of the strand and the primer binds is always the starting point for the replication and the primers are generated by the enzyme DNA primase. So the third step is elongation and the enzymes known as the DNA polymerases are responsible for creating a new strand called elongation. And there are five different known types of DNA polymerases in bacteria and human cells and these are really basic so everybody might know them. It's E. coli, polymerase 3, those are the replication enzymes, while the polymerases 1 through 4 are responsible for checking the errors and replacing anything. And the DNA polymerase 3 binds to the strand at the site of the primer and adds new base pairs complementary to the strand during the replication. And because the replication proceeds in the 5 to 3 direction on the leading strand, the newly formed strand is continuous. And the lagging strand begins replicating by binding multiple primers. So each primer is only several bases apart. And the DNA polymerases adds new pieces of DNA called the Okazaki fragments to the strands between primers. And the process of replication is just discontinuous and the newly created fig figures are disjoint. The fourth step is termination and when the continuous and discontinuous strands are formed, an enzyme called exonucleus removes all of the RNA primers from the original strands. The primers are then replaced with the appropriate bases and another exonucleus proofreads the newly formed DNA to check, remove, and replace any errors. Another enzyme called DNA ligase joins the Okazaki fragments together forming a single unified strand, and the end of the linear DNA presents a problem as the DNA polymerase can only add nucleotides to the 5 and 3 direction. The end of the parent strands cons consist of repeated DNA sequences, which are the telomeres. The telomeres act as protective caps at the end of the chromosomes to prevent chromosomes from fuming. And once it's all completed, the parent strand and the complementary DNA strand coil into what we all know as a double helix shape. And at the end of the replication, they produce two molecules, each with the parent strand and another one with the new strand. So you might be thinking, why is DNA replication important? And the purpose of the DNA replication is to produce two identical copies of the DNA molecule. This is very essential for cell division during growth of repaired or damaged tissue and DNA replication ensures that each new cell receives its own copy of DNA. And after DNA replication is completed, each DNA has one parental or old strand and a daughter or a new strand. And replication in the eukaryotes starts at multiple origins of replication when the replication in the prokaryotes starts in the single origin of replication. 
and that's my presentation on DNA replication.